Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this holy celebration of Pentecost. My name is Laurel Mathewson, and together with my husband, Colin Mathewson, we are the co-pastors at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in North Park. We are so excited today to be joining together with two other congregations as we celebrate this feast day. One is First Presbyterian Church of El Cajon, led by the Reverend Kim Dossie Richardson, and the other is this church right across the street from them, St. Albans Episcopal Church of El Cajon, led by Father David Madsen. We are so excited to be joining together in worship on this day, and we pray that it might be a blessing to you as we worship and pray together, just as it was a blessing to us to prepare this experience for us all. So I invite you now to take a deep breath. If you can, try to get kids settled and everyone in a comfortable position, a way to enjoy and experience this worship together. And may it bring you that joy and spirit and energy this Pentecost day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alléluia, Yesu a sécui. Alléluia, Alléluia, Yesu wa kujuka. Yesu si parev, ser hede Allah, hima gvene minche vercine, amen. Alléluia, Cristo a resucitado. Alléluia, Cristo se sta ofestando. Vendi, eju kreto, era jot, ne e kule. Dormi ali, abi ato ken walk at that. Hallelujah, yes, I'll do today. Hallelujah. Come and she ham bini mitha. Ulibl mosa, mosa machiana. Ulil chaya, almanaya, to kulman dem haymanu, modib gawe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christo resucitado. Yes, suji do fuhola. Hallelujah, al Messiah qam, wa le takun salam al Rabbu ma'akum, daiman. Shlamat maran u farukan, isho am shiikha, am chulokha min adiyya hal prakhtat alam. Hallelujah, Christo ame fufuka. Hallelujah, krugasata ke li. Krugasata ke tapwakata li. Hallelujah. المسيح قام ولتكن سلام الرب معكم دائما المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطي الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور
Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. And, to and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pomphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with the new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Now... No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There ends the reading. What does Pentecost mean for the church? Christ has no body now but yours. The disciples were waiting in Jerusalem because that's what Jesus told them to do. They were told that they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit, but they had no idea what that meant. God was going to do something way cool, but they didn't know what was going to happen. And when it did happen, I think it just totally blew their socks off. The focus here is on community. God chooses to pour out his spirit, not just on a single individual, but on the entire church, the community of believers. Now that's the principle on the day of Pentecost. The principle of community is something that is throughout the New Testament. However, each one of us has an individual journey. And that's evident by the way that Jesus called each one of his disciples by name, one at a time. Pentecost does not diminish the message that each person is unique and special in the eyes of God, but magnifies the unity of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, many members and one body. We're now the body of Christ, and Christ is our head. 
St. Teresa of Avila penned this in the year 1555. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes from which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses the entire world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet. Christ, Christ has no body on this earth now but yours. There's a hot mineral springs pool in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, about the size of a football field. On any given day, you can see people in the shallow end of the pool walking or just sitting with their feet in the water. In the deep end of the pool, some people are swimming laps, others are playing and splashing, jumping in the pool. That's where I think I would like to be, but you may be in the shallow end of the church in your mind while someone else may be in the deep end, right in the center of church activities. But you're still a significant part of the church, of the community, wherever you are, because a spirit like the water in a big swimming pool touches all of us at the same time. The more visible members of the church, like the high divers in a pool, may get more attention, but that doesn't mean that they're the most important. On the contrary, what does St. Paul say who gets who gets the most honor? The members that are not so prominent. That's what he says. Hold in esteem those that aren't so prominent, those that aren't seen, those that aren't up front. Some of those waiting quietly in the shallow water may be the ones watching out for the safety of the children, noticing who's not here today. Make a mental note, I need to give them a call. All the good things happening in church are not that obvious. I challenge you, I challenge you, and I've done this, to take out a pen and list all the ministries of your church, and you think you know them all, but then when you start writing them down, write all that you can think of, both visible to all and those that are behind the scenes. Then ask someone else to compare your notes, see if you've missed something. Wouldn't it be boring if everybody in the church was just like you or me? Think of what we would be missing. The disciples were together in one place. They were waiting. They were waiting together. What does Pentecost mean for the church? Christ has no body now but yours. Amen. This is a poem that reflects on Acts 2, the description of Pentecost. It's a traditional sonnet, and it attempts to look at some of those events through the eyes of someone who has no clue about what's going on. They're a visitor to the city. Letter home to mom from Jerusalem, dated Pentecost. I know you won't believe me, but we were just buying bread when down the street a shack began to vibrate, glow, then burst like thunder. We screamed and ran toward it, then backed. Some Galilean freaks swayed out, full stink, all high on something, don't tell father now. Their hair burned bright, a fad, we think, a crazy dare. They stole our voice somehow and sang in perfect Phrygian our tongue the lunacies that women preach and slaves dream dreams from God, some spirit drowning young. We fled their glare and hid within this cave. It's dark. Please send our love to all. We swoon this all might be the end of sun and moon. Stand the show.
from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gift by the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service by the same Lord. There are varieties of activities by the same God who activate all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge, according to the Spirit, to another, the faith by the same Spirit, to another, the gift of healing by the one Spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, the prophecy, to another, the discernment of the Spirit, to another, the various of kind of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues, all these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who holds to each one individual, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, uh, all the members of the body through many are one body. So it's with Christ, for one in Spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jews or Greek or slave or free, and we're all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. I'll never forget an interaction I witnessed between two Christians when I was in college. A friend of mine who was a leader of the Stanford Gospel Choir was talking to one of the deans of religious life and saying, you know, this chapel is really great, but it would be wonderful if we could get some music in here that would really bring glory to God and really bring people to worship. And she looked at him very seriously and said, I think I understand what you're saying. But I also want you to know that the music we have here does bring this part of the body 
to a place of worship and praise. It's just different. At the time, I felt that she was maybe a little bit harsh with him, that she didn't understand fully what he was saying, or she could have been a bit more kind or inviting in her response to him. But I've been thinking about that interaction today as we ponder what Paul says to the Corinthians about how there is one body, one spirit, but such a wild diversity of gifts and expressions of that spirit, all for the common purpose of building up the body and for the sake of the common good. Today is the day when we remember the church going from parochial to cosmopolitan, from limited in scope to a worldwide vision. And with that explosive expansion of the Spirit's movement and the mission of the church comes a necessary reckoning with diversity. What it means to have a hand that is so very different from an ear and to recognize at the same time that the same Lord stands behind and within it all, bonding us together in ways that we cannot fathom or imagine. I've been thinking about that as we ponder the gifts, even though they might be gifts we wouldn't welcome, of this time of online worship. Many have noted that it's allowed them to visit churches that they otherwise wouldn't visit, allowed them to experience the worship and community of other places that they never would have had the chance to visit if they were just going in person on a Sunday. And I do believe that's something to be celebrated even in this time of great grief and loss. Maybe the Spirit is prodding us once more to recognize that even this body of Christ can never become parochial. We often think of this metaphor of many parts, one body, within our own limited churches. We say, well, there are many different gifts given to those in our community. How can we all work together to build up the body? And when we say body, we really just mean our local church. That's not a bad thing, and that's a valid and helpful interpretation of that scripture. But I would also say that especially on this Pentecost, as we celebrate gratefully with two other local churches, how can we continue to celebrate and at least acknowledge the fact that it's not just our local churches who are doing the work of God? We give passing reference to this, but I invite you on this day of Pentecost to really ponder it in your hearts, to give thanks for the many diverse ways in which God and the Spirit work through various congregations in diverse worship, diverse community expressions, diverse populations in age and race and language, and see that even though there might be diversity there that we cannot even fully reckon with, that we now acknowledge that God, the same God and the same Lord is behind it all. There is a sense on Pentecost that the disciples go forth not even knowing themselves what they are heading into. The Spirit drives them with such energy and enthusiasm and fire that even those left in the streets are shaking their heads with wonder. Today, as we have a more modest celebration with so many languages representing just our three communities in the San Diego region, I hope that we might remember again the unknown places that the Spirit will call us, the ways in which we might be drawn into community with people that we don't expect to be drawn into community with. Remembering that in all of these things, God will work through our diversity of gifts to build up Christ on this earth. And may we also rest a bit with a celebration of this good news, knowing that when our own communities fail in some way to serve or meet the needs of those around us, that it, we are not alone, that we can say, how can we work together? And how can we also pray that some other member of Christ's body may faithfully meet this challenge. Thank you for being part of the bigger body of Christ, wherever you are. May we continue to go forth, crossing barriers that we neither anticipate nor even imagine.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. When have you felt thirsty? You know, what sensations did you experience? How do you remember that thirst? Were you playing for a long time outside with friends or maybe laboring long hours under the sun? I have the most visceral memory of feeling parched after delivering each of my children, one in particular. I've never been so thirsty in my whole life. I labored days with each child, and even with IVs hydrating me, I could not get enough of those buckets of crushed ice. The, the ice tasted like holy nectar from the heavens in that moment. So there's something very physical and spiritual about our need for water. You know, we live with this need, don't we? In this ongoing kind of way. Sometimes it is because we have labored hard and we need to refuel and rehydrate. Some of you have literally had to walk through deserts for survival and in the hopes of a new life. Sometimes we thirst because we are tired and overwhelmed or perplexed by the way that things unfold in life, by our own choices even. Our souls are thirsty for more, for more forgiveness, for more rest, for more safety and stability, for more meaning and authenticity, for more truth and justice and compassion, for more hope and definitely for more love. Jesus knows our thirst. In our gospel reading, it is the end of the festival Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles or Booths. And during this feast, the Jewish community commemorated God's shelter during the Israelites' 40 years of wandering in the wilderness after the Exodus. And they still remember and commemorate this time. During the festival, water was drawn and brought into the temple with joyous trumpets blasting as God was thanked for providing water in the past. Water needed for the land, water needed for our physical being, water to hydrate our souls. As the prophet Isaiah said, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. The people were deeply connected to the land and the seasons. And at the close of the festival, prayers were offered for rain, for their crops. There is this profound awareness of human dependence on water for livelihood and for survival. Jesus knows this. He knows what it is to be a thirsty human being and he takes this physical reality that we've all experienced and relates it to our deepest, innermost longings. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, he says. The only condition of us coming is our own thirst. He doesn't say, come when you're worthy or come if you're deserving, or come when you've gotten your act together, or come when you have learned how to surrender at all. No, the condition is thirst. Our own need and awareness of our need is the condition. The invitation is just as simple. Come, let the one who believes in me drink up. The one who believes in Jesus, who comes to him in need, receives the refreshing, satisfying spiritual hydration from the source and then becomes a vessel of the Holy Spirit poured out. And like the woman at the well in John 4, who is told that all she has to do is ask and then finds her shame dissolve and her life transformed into a spring of overflowing, everlasting life when she receives Jesus' living water, here again, Jesus shares 
out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. The gift of the Spirit is coming. Now, it's not that there was no Spirit before. We know that the Spirit hovered over the waters during creation, surrounding and guiding people and prophet and planet throughout history. But Jesus speaks of an ongoing living presence and the gift of the Holy Spirit experienced in a powerful way like never before, accessed in a way like never before, because Jesus knew how the Spirit moved. He knew the wisdom and the power and the clarity and the rest and the companionship that is like cool water in a hot desert or ice chips in a hospital bed. He knew. And he knew that when the Spirit was unleashed, foreigners would understand each other. Difference would be honored and unity shared. Transformation and healing would happen in the seen and unseen places of our lives. The power to preach, the power to forgive, the power to change the world, the power to love would be accessible in a whole new way. Rivers of living water sustain the church. So, sometimes we don't feel a river of spirit power flowing through us. It feels more like a distant trickle. <laughs> but take heart, because that's the spirit in you when your words refresh a friend in need. That's the spirit's flow when you're able to see and serve your neighborhood with new eyes, sorting food bags or sewing masks out of love. That's the spirit when you feel like quitting, but you find just enough energy to keep going. That's the spirit when you want to cave in to fear and anxiety, but you breathe and pray and follow another voice instead. We are together in this. We, all of us, we are the church today, and we are sustained by the Spirit. So brothers and sisters in Christ, may we approach God thirsty in our need, which is the only condition. May we find Jesus always waiting for us, saying, come. And may we find the Spirit filling us up, with rivers of living water spilling out into the world. Yes, may it be so in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pentecost in a season of pandemic. This is a time, a season unlike any other. Our lostness has encircled the earth and leaves us barren, full of grief and failure, bartering for life with words and ways that are foreign to each other's ears, helpless to our truest needs. We are so very wounded, so long impoverished by makeshift hearing, falsities of our own creating. Our Father calls out to us in a wealth of voices turned to our fragility, calling forth our hidden strength. The Spirit speaks in pure articulation, in endless variations to our struggling hearts. Oh, listen deeply for the indistinguishable. Lord of life, our Savior, speak to us. Call us to yourself in a thousand different voices. Weave your words from there to here, wherever here is on this crowded earth. Sing your tender alleluia to the whimper of each ruined life, each wounded soul. Speak forth, spirit of love, against the untamed evil that exploits you.
that wrecks the very heartbeat of creation. For ah, oh, each thought from heaven heals our own distortions, our makeshift listening. Every syllable you mouth, O oh, great I am, falls upon the bitterness and pride and greed that creeps into our precious being. O oh, Father of the spoken and unspoken, reach us with your heart's great speaking, your love word to each shattered soul. Sing to us, God of all humanity, a simple verse in a multitude of tongues. Craft in us an ever-blended chorus. Oh, fill the raucous world with harmony, the ups and downs of syllables and tones and wonderment and hope. May your every utterance fall upon the bitterness and pride and fear that have defeated us, that shred the vast simplicity of faith, that void the perfect symmetry of love. May your great diversity enchant us, elevate our living and our being, lure us to ride the wings of your pure simplicity. May we sing to each other in a tender multiple of voices. May we sing your song, O living Lord, and speak your love in one true voice that never fails. May this be the gift you grant us, to be filled with your spirit, God of all being, on this timeless day of Pentecost. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. He, by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you for the brilliant and dedicated scientists who seek to understand the infection's nature, to slow or prevent its spread, and to mitigate the suffering it causes. Thank you for doctors, nurses, and everyone from housekeepers to cooks, from dialysis and inhalation technicians to emergency room personnel who are truly risking their lives for the sake of us all. Bless and strengthen them. Keep them safe from all harm and grant them rest when they need it for their own health's sake. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We plead on behalf of the many people who are quarantined and isolated because of exposure to the virus. For everyone who is already ill and for those who are the greatest risk of severe illness or death. Hide them under the shadow of your wings and grant them healing and hope. Lord, Lord in, in your mercy, mercy please, please hear our prayer. Most gentle and gracious Father, we pray for families with children in these difficult days. Some have only one parent. Some are already stressed by things ranging from drugs to physical abuse, from illness of body, mind, or spirit to financial fragility. Lord, some of those households would be like pressure cookers and the children might suffer most when it blows. Let your spirit brood over those troubled waters and give us eyes to see and hearts to respond as helpful. 
mercy, please hear our prayer. We pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world and for our own little portion within it. Many of us cannot worship together or receive the holy sacrament, your own medicine of immortality. Many of our pastors, deacons and deaconesses, monks and sisters and lay religious are unable to care for their flock, your flock, as they usually do. Keep us steadfast in faith, courageous in hope, and unflagging in charity. By the power of your most Holy Spirit, keep us united with your beloved Son, our common Lord and Savior, the shepherd of our souls, and our good physician. Increase in us the hunger for your word, for prayer, and for acts of forgiveness and compassion. Use us as we are able to further your purpose and will, and to share your unchanging love especially among the poor, the ill, the struggling, the dying. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We pray for everyone who, even in this time of common suffering and crisis, refuse to turn to you. We might think that a pandemic is a board of sufficient strength to impart faith when whacked upside an unbelieving head. And we are astonished when it isn't so. Lord, our act, words, actions, and lives be as lanterns filled with the presence and love of Jesus. Let everything we say and do be signs of your grace and mercy. Lord, we are bold to pray. Redeem this time of pandemic so that many hearts may be softened and many lives may be overwhelmed by a flood of repentant faith in Jesus, their Savior, Lord and God. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We know that other needs continue to be urgent, dear Father. We ask the Spirit's help in remembering them before you. And for the sake of your dear Son, we pray that you may heed all our prayers and graciously answer them in accordance with your will. To your glory and for the welfare of your people. Amen. Baba yetu uli embinguni Jina la kuli tukuzwe Ufanme wako uje Mapenzi yako ya timizwe Hapa duniani Kama uko minguni Utupele uriziki riziki yetu utusame makosa yetu kama sisi tunavyowasame waliyo tukosa usitutie majaribuni Lakini utu wako wena yule mwopu Kwa kuwa ufalme ni wako Na ngubu na utukufu Hata milele
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the perplexing and wondrous Pentecostal God, you infuse us with your spirit, urging us to vision and dream. Grant that, gathered and directed by your spirit, we may confess Christ as Lord and combine our diverse gifts with a singular passion to continue his mission in this world until we join in your eternal praise. May the gift of your presence find voice in our lives, that our babbling may be transformed into discernment and the flickering of many tongues light an unquenchable fire of compassion and justice. Amen. Community prayer. It's such an honor to pray for the faith family at the First Presbyterian Church of El Cajon. Our people made sure that I got the red fabric usually hung in the sanctuary for this special worship service. And it's so good to be with you all. Please pray with me. Oh, good and faithful God, we're so grateful for the ways that you have loved and led the people of First Press El Cajon for 137 years, this being our, our founding anniversary month. Lord, we thank you for our neighborhood. We thank you for beloved neighbors like St. Albans and Father Dave right across the street. What a gift to partner with them in meaningful ways for special events and our community garden and welcome ministries. Lord, as First Press El Cajon interviews candidates for a director of youth and urban ministries, we ask for your wisdom and guidance. Prepare us to welcome whoever you have in mind. And Lord, this morning, we celebrate among those celebrating from the anniversary of the Zopfis to the birthdays happening, like Fika Slew's birthday just days ago and Janice Hopwood's today. We rejoice with those who have gotten good news, whose shops are opening, who have found new employment and who have graduated. But as we rejoice with those who rejoice, we also mourn with those who mourn, remembering those that struggle with depression and loneliness and financial hardship and heartache of all kinds right now. Lord, we pray for those in our faith family with physical struggles, including Sharon and Gwen. We pray for the surgeries that have happened or are happening soon for Kelly and Donna, Violet and Ashlyn. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and their grief journeys. And we pray for those facing big change, like entering college or moving. Lord, we pray for Bernice, who moved to Sacramento, and Betty, who moved to Santa Ana, both recently, to be closer to their families. And Lord, we pray for our sister Victoria, who is en route right now to rejoin her husband in Nigeria. Lord, we praise you that you are the God who is with us, the God who is attentive and active and creatively tending to all of our needs. In the uncertainty of life, we praise you for your constancy. And we lift all this to you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome home. 
St. Albans has morning prayer service on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. live on Facebook. So just go to our Facebook page at 9 o'clock next Sunday and we will be there and we look forward to seeing you if you're there. We also have a coffee hour time at 930 and we do that do via Zoom. So you can call the office at 619-444-8212 and get the meeting ID number for the coffee hour and also the number for Sunday school, which is at 1030 on Sundays. Also This week at St. Luke's, we offer prayers of thanksgiving for the life of Dang, the son of Abuk and Tiop, as he celebrates his third birthday. We also offer and ask for your prayers of comfort and intercession for Natalia, who is um, suffering and mourning after the death of her beloved husband. Finally, we ask your prayers too for Catherine Baum's relatives in South Sudan who have also perished from COVID. Their names are Edward Cholik, and Nyang Lulgai. Please keep them and all who mourn their loss in your prayers and in your hearts as we join our grief with the grief of those so many around the world who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Now is the time in the service if you are able to make a financial gift to one of the three churches collaborating today, First Presbyterian of El Cajon, St. Albans in El Cajon, or St. Luke's in North Park. Of course, some people are not able to make uh, as much as uh, contribution they usually could or none at all. Totally fine. And actually, in that case, please let us know if there's some way we can help you at this time. This is a really hard time for everyone. And God has brought all of us together, especially on this Pentecost Day, to make sure that those who have something to give financially can make sure that they can make that exchange with those who may need a little bit more financially right now. So thank you in advance for your generosity. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now.
St. Luke, St. Albans, First Press, El Cajon. Thank you so much for joining with us in this special Pentecost worship service. What a joy to gather together in spirit in this way. Hear the benediction written by Kelly Ann Hall. Welcome, spirit wind, animator, sustainer. You birth the cosmos, ever expanding every system in perpetual motion. You circulate over earth, breeze across the surface of eternal waters, teasing waves to roll. You twist up the dusty ground and give dimension to your beloved. You in spirit the dead. Create space in the hearth of our being to welcome spirit fire, the igniter of true life. Take up our hearts, surrendered, kindling before your breath, spark to flicker, flicker to flame, stoke the hearts of your people. Like floating embers off the tongue, one anthem will rise and emblazoned by faith will catch on like wildfire. Unity is the work of the spirit. Gather us to your life force, O oh God. Leave no coal unlit, not one soul in the cold. Thank you for tending to your light within us, O oh God. Thank you for sustaining the light of our souls. People of God, family of Christ, go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, the peace of the Lord be always with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Mo yu atakuta po odotu tobotke. Mo uru na sikorki. Shlam dem shiha mit kulokhu. La paz del Señor esté siempre con ustedes. Amani ya Bwana ikae nanyi daima. Der Friede des Herrn sei mit dir. Ju de ping an yong yun yuni tomta. Imirende ti am kama ti bele na awi na kuzona. Namat mara no parukan ada am chulo khamun adi halti am. Ike la paz del Señor siempre esté con ustedes. 